Because last year, this didn't work, so unfortunately last year I couldn't really do the presentation last to give. Um, so we are getting the doing these presentations like six people in the room of the team that we, uh, we need. So my name is Dave Hingley. I'm one half of the team that call ourselves Titanium Bunker. We do the tech bits for fun and what about games. And uh, so last year I was, at a, I was at a party and I started talking to some guy. And it turned out this guy was a, a storyteller. And foolishly I decided that I was I'll, I'll volunteer to sort of animate one of his stories. How hard could it be, right? And uh, so I decided that uh, we're going to use open source software for it. But I wanted to try and release the source files as, as, uh, as free so anyone could just grab them and use them. And, um, and just go with it that way. You know, I've got a full time job, I'm sure I can just do a few hours a year and it'll be fine. That was a year ago. We're only just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> uh, animation historically has always been fairly labor intensive and time consuming sort of thing to do. Um, and especially when you sort of factor in sort of like using open source software. So initially, we, I did a quick draw around the uh, repositories looking for some decent open source animation software. And I looked at uh, Pencil, which I don't Oh, quick straw poll. Any people here who are actually animators? Mm. Anybody interested in animation? Me, hey, everyone. <laughs> hey. So, any people actually download the anima any animation software from any of like Linux repositories? Well, not Linux repository, but yeah. Well, with Ubuntu repository or, or some kind of oh, use some open source stuff. Mm. Okay, so what have you downloaded? Uh, both Blender and Pubber. Okay. I think it's called stop animation, stop animation something. So that's for making that's for making stop motion animation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I was looking at uh, software to make two D uh, animation yeah. um, because I work in three D all the time. Normally I decided to sort of mix it up a bit and do something with two D. So I looked at Pencil, which is a normal uh, pencil testing software. It's okay. It's got some issues with saving files. So put that away. Uh, there's 2P, which is a bit new at the moment, so, and it's a bit, it's a bit too new. I've got, to, I've got to really delve into that. And the one that I've decided to use is something called Synthic, uh, uh, Synthic Studio, which is open source. It's got better support, so that you can take some SVG artwork from, say, Inkscape, mm -hmm. put it in there, and that means you can make your videos at like super, super high resolution, so you can output like HD video, and it will look great. And it's uh, it's kind of geared towards making cutout stuff. So I'm thinking this could be really useful. I can make this animation really simply, uh, in, in a kind of cutout styley, and oh, I can't believe I said styley. And and it take no time at all. And also it means I don't have to draw every frame because it's got a tweening engine, so it'll, it'll handle the, all the animation for me. Perfect. So that's when we started working with Synthix uh, Studio, and we found it's got some features. Um, one of which is, I like to work in uh, my own way, which is I like to have my characters as, as files. I like to have my scenes as a separate, set, uh, a separate set of files. So I can say, okay, in this particular shot, I want character A, character B, character C. Okay, we'll get them from the our bank of characters drop them in on the, uh, in the mm -hmm. scene files in the background, animate them, render them, put them in the video, job's good. Synthic doesn't like that. What Synthic does, Synthic tries to be helpful and say, oh, I'll just make a reference for that. But the, fact that the, the problem with that is, when you save animation, there's no animation to save. You expect mm -hmm. the animation to be on the, on the source reference. So we wrote something called Synthic Studio. Uh, and Civic Studio allows us to actually compile scenes together. And it's, it's like a web based front end, which is drag and drop your characters into a, an area of the screen and say, okay, that's my, my file. And, um, what's your one? Okay. Um, <laughs> so, uh, it allows you to create files and you start animating. So, it's been a year and we're still not finished. And there's been a lot going on. So, I've been moved house. I work full time on a game called Be Dangerous. Hey. Hey. Thank you. Thank you guys. <laughs> uh, just the fact of working with Simply gave us a whole new challenges. 
with te te technical difficulties, part of which is this Simpic uh, Simpic stage that we've written. Um, so yeah, I'll start the next frame. So right now we're at an interesting interesting point in the project, and if we could start the project again, we'd be so much better at it. Um, so we've introduced a whole lot of new things. So we've got Simpic stage that allows us to compile uh, scenes, so we can animate them. We've also started developing uh, continuous integration. So any programmers in? Yeah. Oh, we've got some programmers in. So you all, you all know a bit about continuous integration, right? Mm -hmm. So that you, you've got a series of source files that constantly get updated as they get updated. Mm -hmm. You then create what, you know, yeah. the final project mm -hmm. so you can get iterations mm -hmm. of the film. Mm -hmm. So we've been experimenting with some continuous integration. And we've, like, we've got this system down and sort of almost works where if you create a scene file, check it into the repository, we, 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 we put everything running on Bazaar, uh, the system looks for changes, says, oh, you've got a new file. I'll just automatically render that out, add it into the project video, and then make a video. Um, and that's going to be also part of the system that we're going to be giving away to everyone that wants it. It's there. Oh, there's a trailer. And I'll show you the trailer. Sound probably won't work because there's no sound plugged into the That's good point. laptop. No sound, so just make, a, make up your own song. <laughs> so um, as part of this, we're using uh, Leica Reel and animatic. So no one's familiar. No, there's no animator, so I'll explain what an animatic is. So when we start making animation, the first thing everyone does is they make a storyboard, right? Yeah. Um, what an animatic is is that storyboard filmed to the rough cuts that you want. So let's say you've got a scene where uh, you've got establishing shots, so that's from the storyboard panel. Someone comes through the front door, that's another, uh, another storyboard panel. And someone put, uh, puts the keys down, that's another storyboard panel. And let's say you want the opening shot to be two seconds, so you hold that still for two seconds on in your video editing software, mm -hmm. come through the front door in like half a second, so you still, you're still is like that long, and, and putting the keys down is like a second. And the beauty of that is it allows you to sort of get a real simple idea of how the edit's going. Mm -hmm. you know, you're doing your edit before you've even animated a single frame, really. And it's a placeholder, mm -hmm. which with our integration system means that we can just say, okay, swap that piece of video with this piece of video. And as long as you keep the same times, which you've already you know, planned for, the, the, all of a sudden the videos will start to appear. Um, there we go. So, <laughs> here we go. And so, for that to work, the way we've done it is we're using something called Jenkins. <laughs> but not that Jenkins. Jenkins is an automation tool. And uh, we're going to use it to sort of automate the process of rendering it and cleaning it up. We use Cadence Live for our video. Um, so Cadence Live is great, but it's got some issues in that paths are always absolute paths are never relative. So if you move it to a different machine, all of a sudden all your or if you move that Cadence Live project to a different <laughs> machine, everything breaks. So we've got uh, essentially a, a, a script that basically pulls the video on looking for looking for changes. So okay, this file's changed or this file's been added, make a render, hack the Cadence Live resource file with the source file, put these assets in, then make a render to the right location, check it in afterwards. So this is a script that we've written, film fix. I say I've written my, my cohort and my, my, my compadre wrote that one. And essentially what this does is it will patch uh, file paths. And I know this sounds really boring guys, I'm sorry, but this is one of the, the, the core tenants if you're making an animation is you need to be organized mm -hmm. and try and work smart. And sometimes Linux doesn't work smart for us, so we have to work smart for it. Um, so what this does is it will essentially, if you chuck it at a Cadence Live file, I'm right saying if you chuck it at a Cadence Live file, it will patch yep. all the resources yep. to your local directory. Yep. So if, as long as the assets are uh, named the same, it, it effectively you won't lose. You won't get lots of like, can't find this video, can't find this video, can't find this video when you load it. There's a video on YouTube where I demonstrate it fixing it. Yes. So you can give links out later. Thank you. Um, so we use automation to, we 
Kagan was great. Uh, Synfig is, is great because it allows us to sort of run it from a command line. Doing so, okay. Synfig just runs this video and it's really quick at doing that because it hasn't got to have the front end open doing stuff and telling you that it's rendering, so it just does its own thing in the background. Um, and then once we've made our video, once we've made our rendered frames, we use Film Fixer to actually compile it all together to make our small video shot, which then gets put into the, into the Kagan Live project, and then that Kagan Live project is re-rendered out, and then checked back into the repository, or will be once we find out those little creases. Um, and so here's an example. This is kind of boring, well, sorry, you guys. This is, this is boring code. This is boring code of uh, Kagan Live project, and this is just showing uh, um, an image, so a frame from the animatic. So this just happens to be uh, the image called 003, and I believe it's on for 25 frames. And it's got some width and height stuff in there as well. And what we do is we hack that, and get rid of that, and we chuck that in, which is just a load of code, which we work out because it's a piece of video. And that allows us to swap stills for video. And of course, once you've done that once, you don't have to do it again. You can just re render the video and the project will just find it every time. So we hope to complete it soon. Uh, we're actually progressing quite nice on the project. It's starting to actually be a lot easier to animate with because we find out all these, these little kinks, these little uh, these bugs, these, these, these problems in the way that we want to work, as opposed to the way that some people would like us to work. We sort of imposed our will on it. Um, well, the whole question is, but I'll, if, I, if you give me a second, I'll show you our trailer. Uh, and I'm sorry, guys, I am, this is running Windows. <laughs> Don't kill me. So much to give. I'm not finished the film. Wait till I finish the film, and then. Uh, uh, what's good? Win that media player. Yeah, do it now. Oh, I can't get me to win media player for this as well. <laughs> so. This is just a preview of some stuff we're working on. So this trailer is filled with until the set yeah. is now. Yeah. So this is um, for a story, of course. The kingdom is in peril, and there's only one person that can save the day. And that person is Cat Detective, of course. <laughs> There was a kind of moment where suddenly <laughs> there was a moment where suddenly uh, we got the systems in place and we could actually start to make animation. We could actually start to replace some of these shots, and it was like, oh, this suddenly this is actually working in the way that we wanted to work. Because uh, it's, it's a great piece of software, but it's really difficult to understand, and I think that's a real problem. Luckily, the community is quite active, and. Uh, We'll be documenting as much as you can in how to use it. We'll be releasing all the characters, so the Cat Detective, the Queen of Guards, they'll be released uh, under a Creative Commons license, which, whichever one gives you guys the most freedom. Uh, you guys can then play with it and simply make your own animations with it and you know, disassemble it and reverse engineer it to find out how we, we've done certain bits and bobs. Um, so I'm going to keep this. Simple, I hope you will find that interesting. And I'll say, any questions? Yeah, how easy is it to use? Can I, as a non geeky person, can I like, come in and use your software or do it's like going to the command line? No, it's, it's uh, simple stage is all web based. <coughs> Essentially, uh, all you do is when we start it for the first time, you say, okay, my character directory is here, so all the characters are in there, that's it. At that point, then tells you these are what characters that are available to you. There's a square in the centre of the screen. Drag them on. Say, okay. It makes it, it makes a simple file for you, which downloads to your browser directory. You can open that up and simply and you're ready to, ready to work um, we, we had to do it simply because it was designed for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I'm an artist, not a programmer, really. Or do I dabble? So we, we wanted to be simple, we wanted to have people to be able to use it. 
there's more people to be able to not fight against the software. You do need to fight against things, but you don't want the tools to make it easier to be just as hard, you know what I mean? So um, we'll, we'll, we sort of want to keep that simple. The stuff with the auto continuous integration, that's kind of relatively recent, so we are still finding that stuff out and we're trying to get that easy to use as well. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? So what's the advantage of compiling your scenes? I know that makes it easier for you, but aren't there any other advantages? Well, the big advantage is that you could do things like, ultimately, because you're swapping one asset with another, you could potentially do things like map animation onto another character. Because as long as, as, long as, the, as, long as the hierarchy is the same, the contents of it are immaterial. And so synfig has got this concept of a group. So you can put graphics and all kinds of you know, some SVG files or bitmap in a group. And the group can contain a group. So you can build essentially a small hierarchy. And it's what we call a, an FK chain. So you're familiar with Blender, so you probably know the FK chain. Not really familiar with Blender. Oh, so you have to write that loaded as well. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't used it much. Oh, OK. So an FK chain is a series of bones. And it's just like a plane with an action map or a or You know, if I want my, to reach my arm out there, the first thing I do is I rotate my upper arm. And let's say I want to reach up a bit, so then I rotate my forearm. And then I want to rotate my hand, and then I rotate the finger. So you're essentially working down the chain. And that's called forward kinematics. Um, these characters, are, it's the simplest way of setting up movement in a character, and these characters are set up that way. There's an alternative mechanism called inverse kinematics, where you just grab the hand, and these will take care of themselves. You don't care what this does too much. You, you're just moving the restraint to, 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 to make the movement. That's more complicated than simply does have that, but it's more complicated to set up, and the whole point of this, I want it to be simple. I, want, I don't want to spend ages setting up a character. I want to set a character up and animate it, um, because I want to get, yeah, this, this project is supposed to take a year. <laughs> We're into year two now, so it's, 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 it's taken a while, but I'm hoping that hopefully this time next year we'll say it's done, you never have to animate this thing again <laughs> until the next time. Uh, <laughs> um, so the idea is you've got these groups. So the group is representative of, say, the bone in my arm. So I don't care what the skin is around it. This could be a t-shirt, it could be a long sleeve, it could be a piece of armor. If this bone rotates, this is linked to it, it will rotate. And the idea is that characters are set up in the same way. So if you've got like a queen, Got the queen there. She's got like an upper body, left arm, left upper arm, left forearm, left hand, whatever, and the head. You could swap those pieces of graph. You could swap those graphics out, put something else in there, or you could change it. So maybe she's got uh, uh, like a dress that she likes to wear for best occasions. So she's got a purple dress on. Maybe you want it to be blue. We could have. You could uh, make a version of the queen in a blue dress and say so replace this character with that character. And that's something that. It's feasible within using Simplex stage. And of course, it's all in the file. So what you're doing is essentially saying, this graphic with this graphic, swap the animations in that file as well. And it's, it's still in the group. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially, you've, you've, told, you've, you've swapped the graphics out, and now she's got the dress on. Same file, no, no work. You haven't got to reanimate that. And if, you get, if you're swapping it for a blue dress, why well, you swap it for a different character? As long as, as, long as, the, as long as the names are the same, or they've got a, good, a name convention that we can work with, and the parole, the cat detective's upper arm is the same as the queen's upper arm, it might look a bit weird, so the cat's doing this, you know. But it's going to be quicker to tweak the animation of that than reanimate it from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a space in the approach to, uh, some studios will do things like motion capture. So they'll have like a standard walk cycle and you'll drop it onto a character, and the character's totally different proportions. So your map cap guy will do this, and your character you've mapped it onto will do this. Mm. So then it's like, well, I can put a layer on top of that and additively animate the hands down. So now it's, it's matching. The animation time is a, lot, is a lot faster because I'm not setting this pose up, I'm just tweaking it. And it can just be like, adjust that one frame. Job done. Just that one, just that one frame, job done, and oh, that's, that's time for the pub. <laughs> so there's, there's a scope for it for that. There's, um, 
this, so when we talk about reviews, we talk about changing characters on. So that's two applications you can use with Synthix, Synthix stage. Using a continuous integration model with Jenkins, you can, you can in effect, make new animation, it will pick it up. There's no reason why this couldn't work for anything. So let's say you've shot a film, you make a film, um, a live action film. So you're shooting the live action film, you've edited it, everything's in Canada Live. You decide to shoot, like, the reshoot the last scene, do a pick up or something, you know, as they call it. So you get your actors here and you do your filming. You check that into, back into, as a whole, source safe, whatever it's going to be. Jenkins finds it, picks it up, it's a piece of video, okay, so you don't have to do anything with it other than swap out the video, swap out the, the, the old shot that we've got with this new shot, re render the video, and away we go. And we can, that can be uh, potentially be scheduled. So you can say, okay, give me days. Effectively, in live action film, you have the days where you, you know, do like this, it's down, they show you the days for that previous day shooting. And they do the same thing uh, with uh, animation, I believe it's called the rushes. Same, 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 same thing. You're basically watching what's just come through and saying, oh, tweak that arm, tweak that leg, change the background colour. You can make those changes, save the file, just leave it. Let's let Jenkins do the work, you know. Um, any, other, any other questions? Anyone? Where can we find uh, information about it? Well, thanks, thanks for the person who I've never met before. Yeah. <laughs> so if you do want to find out about it, um, we've got lots of documentation. We've got lots of videos over on our YouTube channel, which is titaniumbunker.tv. Or you can go to our website, which is www.titaniumbunker.com. We've got all kinds of, it's all categorised, you can look at the art, you can see some stuff we do in art, see some of the games we've got. You can see all of that in big stage and all the trials and tribulations that we've had with that, all the fun that we've had. Um, and uh, yeah, it's 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 a it's a project it's a it's a project that's nearly done. We're kind of about seventy percent through the animation. We've got a production chart that, that tells us we're about seventy percent through the production, um, and we're hopefully by the summer next year it'll be done, and I can probably screw it. Yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. I suppose. Um, obviously, the files will be available then, and uh, you guys can start playing with it and building up. Hopefully, we can build up a bank of characters and assets and things that people will just go, no, I want to make a cartoon. I want to make it about some knights. Here's some knights. I want to put a dragon in there. Here's a dragon. Here's a background. Make some animation. Mm -hmm. Render it out. Put it online. And let's make it creative so people can have, a, have fun with animation and play with it. Um, if there's anyone, if anyone wants to uh, look at it, we can probably find out our YouTube uh, video of Jenkins doing his thing. Uh, find us out later on. We'll, we'll try and access the YouTube channel or something. Yeah, we're, we're here all weekend. We're here all weekend. Find us out. If you bug us, you might get a ribbon. You might not. It depends if you've got any ribbons, basically. Um, like this. Uh, thanks so much.